Hello! The camera's pointed upwards, which must mean we're going to be looking at some huge boxes for, yes, it is Video Game Tat Collector's Edition time again. Do you know it's been over a year since I did a video on this? Which has been a fundamental error on my part, because my house is now filling up with giant bloody boxes full of video game tat that I got cheap. Because they're always massively expensive when they're released, these things, but get cheap very quickly if you keep your eye out. Anyway, we're going to start off with something that everybody wanted recently. Boom! It's the Pip Boy from Fallout, specifically Fallout 4. Personal information processor for Vault 111 deployment. Yes, it's basically the um, computer they strap onto their arm in the Fallout games, which, frankly, if you're a bit of a Fallout fan like me, you are quite keen on. I played Fallout 3 to bloody death and loved every minute of it. Although it must be pointed out, that may have come back to haunt me, but we'll get into that later. So, here is the box, what it comes in like, and my god, it's nice. I was expecting just a cardboard box or something, but no, it's a big plasticky replica of some sort of crate, what they might have in Vault Triple One there. Consult your overseer for more information or refer to the enclosed operational instructions. Fits most human arms, does not emit alpha, beta or gamma rays, does not contain radioactive materials. Yes, it's got all your favourite in-universe writings on it. Unfortunately, what it doesn't have is any kind of paint job, because while it's, you know, a big impressive plastic box here, which is rather nice, it kind of looks plasticky, which is a bit of a shame if they'd just done a bit of, I don't know, weathering on it. Might look better from a distance, but... Um, it's still, well, it still looks all right from a distance. It only looks plastic if you get up very close to it. It's a nice box, and I like it. Let us release the sides. Clunk, click every tip. And <gasps> look, it's a game and stuff. And the pit boy. Made in China, it says. Yep, we'd probably guess that one. So, on the top, you've got the actual game. That's always a good start. In one of those steel books, which I'm personally not too keen on, but maybe you like them. That's up to you. Tell you the worst thing in the world, though, when they do steel books without the name of the game on the spine. Why do they do that sometimes? I'm trying to think of a specific example. I think Mortal Kombat 10 did recently. Oh, I can't remember. And inside there's just Gumpf and a disc and that. I'm going to be honest, this is kind of irrelevant for PC games now, because you're just after the code to let you download the game. I mean, you can install it from the DVD-ROM if you are thus inclined, I suppose. Um, but then it downloads a shitload of patches anyway, doesn't it? So, I don't know. It swings and roundabouts. Now, I should point out, I got this very cheap through a friend, and it is the French edition. In fact, it was so cheap, I think... I, I ended up paying just like £10 over the price of the standard PC edition in the UK, which I was rather chuffed with. Well, less chuffed when I saw it, but we'll get into that in a moment. So, all the documentation is en français. So, the Season Pass advert that currently comes with it, and also adverts for Doom, they're doing another one, Dishonored 2, this time the mask's even more fucked up, and The Elder Scrolls Online nobody gives a shit about. Um, gotta say, it's a bit cheeky, really, when you spent, like, I mean, it's like over £100, if you were to buy it in the UK, generally, and you open up the box, and it says, just immediately faces you with an advert to buy more stuff from the people. That does seem a bit cheeky. Especially when it's a fucking season pass, which nobody in their right mind would pay for anyway. Hey, give us money up front for something in the future that we're not really sure what it is yet and we're not going to tell you. Yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't I give my fucking bank details and jump off a cliff and cut out the middleman? Good God. Um, survival Guide. Edition Condensé. Um, this basically is the bit you're kind of paying for in the PC version, because there's a code on the back that uh, gives you access to the game. And here's the Pit Boy instruction manual that I had to look up online, because my French ain't that good. Ugh, tompy. So, let's have a look at the thing itself, which is packed very heavily in uh, foam, which is excellent, so it means less damage to it. Also comes whoop, with this rather nice display stand. Hey, hey, hey. Pit Boy Model 3000 Mark IV, manufactured by Rubco Industries for distribution by vault -Tec Corporation. Not for civilian use. So it's nice that it comes with that, because this is something I would have considered putting on the old shelf. Now, the way it works is you can put your smartphone in where that picture is. Simple as. And there's like a million bits of stuff to let virtually any size phone sit, fit in it, except one of those fablet things, presumably, because nothing fits in those. Right, let's take the old watch off, and I'll show you quickly how it attaches. As you can imagine, ooh, lots of uh, very soft memory foam in there. You can strap it on. Good God, rest in peace headphone users, I do apologise. I'll try and fiddle with the volume later. Um, I won't do this up again, because you probably won't want to hear it do that again. And then, yeah, stick it on like that. And then it's got actually a metal clamp, which goes over, which is a rather a nice touch, I think, and gives it a slightly nicer look. And there we go, it fits on your arm, and none of the knobs do anything. 
literally nothing. It's all done through touch screen on your phone. It is a good idea to use the app, incidentally, if you are playing the game, uh, because if not, you're stuck using the um, in-game system, which is a massive pain in the arse. It's much easier if you can get up on an iPad or something. I um, wouldn't necessarily recommend a phone. The bigger the screen, the better for that kind of thing. And I certainly wouldn't recommend playing it on your phone strapped to your wrist, because that's just fucking weird, unless it's a virtual reality game. And it ain't not yet. So, yeah, um, basically these don't do a whole lot. That moves a stick. This, oh god, oh. <laughs> hmm, yeah, it feels a bit cheap, frankly, I've forgotten that. This thing spins around and clicks, this thing just kind of spins, and then goes up and down, that tells you the rads. You can switch the power on, and it turns on an LED there, and one on the top. And then you can press it again and it goes off. Thanks for that. Um, as you can probably tell at home, there is a quite a large problem with this, and it's the same one as goes for this. Now, some people are complaining that this is just, you know, oh, it's a big bit of plastic. Well, of course it fucking is. What did you expect it to be made out of? Rubies or something? Of course it's a plastic thing. The weakness is, it looks like a plastic thing. They've done no attempt at weathering at all. It's just literally, here's your moulded plastic. Away you go! The little screws are just plastic on it, and, you know, I kind of want to see it on a shelf or something, but frankly, it just looks so plasticky, it's kind of put me off. That is a shame. However, if you are at home and you have any sort of painting skills, you could probably make this look fucking amazing very quickly indeed. And I'll tell you what, it's a bloody godsend for anybody who wants to cosplay as a uh, Fallout character, because it will save you a lot of time for constructing your own, and, you know, coat of paint and it's going to look better than anything you can make yourself, let's face it. So I'm kind I'm kind of torn on it. I think I don't. Yeah, I think because I got it cheap, I don't mind it. If I'd spent the full price on it, I would be less amused. I shall be brutally honest with you there. And I'm going to see if I can find somebody to paint it up a bit uh, to act before I actually display it. But then, if you paint it up, all the value will get. Oh wait. These things never hold any fucking value anyway, do they? That is the rule of limited edition games. Anyway, Fallout 4 seems like quite a good game, but frankly it's far too similar to Fallout 3 for me, and I got sick of that years ago, which is why I stopped playing it years ago. And they've made all the um, dialogue choices simpler, although apparently there's a mod to change that. I don't know, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to wait a couple of months and mod it up and then give it another go and see if I enjoy it or not. Anyway, we're now going to jump cut to the next scene because the boxes are so huge it's going to be a pain in the ass to move everything. Ugh. Oh look, it's a dirty old can. That's nice, and I've already drunk it ages ago. This is Overcharged Delirium XT, or at least it was, powered by extremophiles, which I think means somebody who is sexually attracted to um, the extremities of the human body. I don't know, but please recycle. Caution, this beverage may alter your world. Who remembers what this is from then? That's right, it's a promotional item, or indeed was, for Sunset Overdrive. Now, Sunset Overdrive, Xbox One exclusive game, a fun looking open world game. Now, I remember there being a huge build up to that, and then nothing. Um, like basically, oh, this looks good. Oh, no, it isn't. One of those things where there's a massive orchestral fanfare that ends in a wet fart. But when I just looked it up, on uh, the mighty internets, it got like really good reviews and was um, voted Game of the Year or something. So fuck knows where I got that impression from originally. Um, I'm going to have to pick up a copy because it's like 12 quid second hand now or something and give it a go. Anyway, yeah, the plot of the game revolves around people who drink an energy drink and it turns them into monsters or something. Not metaphorically, but literally. And yeah they made an energy drink to go with it. Well, it's probably just a standard energy drink with a slightly different uh, sticker on it, let's face it. I remember drinking it, and it tasted like every other energy drink. Very sweet, and you kind of thought it was maybe giving you diabetes with every sip. So no change there, then. Right, I am now going to bring in the biggest box in the world. In fact, I think I'm going to have to jump cut because the next box is absolutely bloody massive. Wait for it! Boom! It is the Big Ben case of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And my bloody ass, how big is it? Answer, very. Look, there's the top of it. Um, it's an interesting box, actually. There's a slot in the back which has most of the gubbins, but to open the main case itself, you have to grip on to this clock face and just pull it off. And it's held on by incredibly strong magnets. Watch. That's pretty bloody strong. Anyway, what's inside? If you guessed a figurine, you were incorrect. There's just a small, tiny little dead wasp in the middle. No, wait, it is a figurine. Ready? Bloody hell. Look at that for a thing of opulence. 
It is indeed Assassin's Creed Jim, my favourite character from all of the Assassin's Creed games. And there he is looking all London-y in front of some of the uh, Big Ben bits of clock. I'm going to guess cogs and maybe a hand. And yes, it's very bloody nice. Um, the only thing these things suffer from, and it's very, very common, is if you look at the face... Whoop, moving the camera in, getting technical now. The stubble never looks right. They've done a slightly better job, because I think maybe he has a slightly longer beard than these characters tend to. When you look at things like Splinter Cell Jim and the other characters, it never looks quite right. Well, that's not a bad one, I've got to say, but still not 100%, especially as compared to the rest of it, which is somewhat flawless. Really, really nice paint deco. You've got little um, mud blobs on the side where he's been a dirty Jim. And yes, it's very nice. Ubisoft always do their statues very nice. In fact, in previous installments, it was slightly embarrassing for the other um, statues when you got the Ubisoft one, because it always looked so much better, because they actually put some fucking effort into it. Unlike, say, for instance, the Two Worlds 2 one. Good God, I still have nightmares. So anyway, yeah, that's really bloody nice. If you are seriously into your Assassin's Creed, that's a fucking nice thing to have, but it's bloody pricey, as one would suggest. All right, let's get this back in, and we'll see what's in the flap at the back, which sounded far ruder than I meant it to. Ready? Oh my goodness. Ooh, it's all in a big drawer. Right, you've got some sort of um, arty lithograph thing. Looks especially like a table mat, actually. But it's on the back. Big Ben Collector's Case. Thank you for being one of our most loyal fans. Thank you for giving us large sums of money and all that sort of gubbins, which we don't really believe in. And that's quite nice. But yeah, it, with, especially with the outside, I am thinking Granny's table mat kind of thing. You've got the game itself. No, wait, no, you haven't. You've got an empty steelbook. The game was actually, like on top, in a normal plastic uh, case. Oh, by the way, I don't have it to hand, actually. It was a bit of an error. But it was just a normal, like, um, PlayStation 4 case. You know, the blue plastic ones. But if you want, you can swap it for this rather nice Oppression Has to End steelbook. Quite like this one, actually. I think because they've done something with it rather than just put on some pictures of the game. And it's all embossed and that. But uh, still not really a fan of the old steelbooks. We have here... The Art of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the dreaded art book. These are often lazy as hell. What's this one like? Um, it's all right. The old stuff in. They, really, this just usually is concept art that they stick in a book. Again, something which, if you're really into the game, you might enjoy for five minutes, but uh, some of it's in, very pretty stuff in here. But, I don't know, these always feel a bit cobbled together, and this is no exception, frankly. But it ain't bad, it's a little extra. You've got a map of London, oh my god, on a very, very thick card. Um, you can buy your Staric syrup on the back, according to the advert. And yes, there is an advert. Not an advert, a map. But what if we combine the two into a map vert? No, this is a map of the game locations. You probably guessed that one, didn't you? Right, let's put all that back in there. And, oh my goodness. If I can get this out, a hip flask. <laughs> from the London Rooks, which are a faction in the game, as you will already know if you played it, and probably guessed if not. And it's not a bad thing, actually. It's like a proper hip flask, just a metal thing with a bit of faux leather around it, embossed. What more do you want in your life? Answer, probably quite a lot of things. But if you haven't got them, you can take this with you and get drunk on the move until you forget about it. See? They thought of everything. Anyway, time for another jump cut where I show you the Assassin's Creed Syndicate soundtrack that I forgot to show you a minute ago. Haven't listened to it yet, don't know if it's any good, but frankly, in my experience of game soundtrack stuff, they're very rarely actually worth listening to. Some of them are, some of them have a nice track or two, but they're often just, well, stuff designed to be played in the background of something and not really have that much attention paid to them. So instead, I shall show you the finest collectible from any game ever. Many thanks to Will of Backyard Gaming for sending this in, and I think the sent the energy drink as well earlier, if I remember. It's a red tie! <laughs> what could be more useful for me than a red tie? Answer, money to buy more red ties? I don't really know. Guess which game it's from. Faster! Too slow. It was... Hitman. Specifically, Hitman Absolution. Bit of an older one there. Yes, they actually gave out promotional red ties, very shiny red ones. 
I love it, because it's got to be the easiest thing in the world to cosplay, hasn't it, really, Hitman? Get yourself a black suit and a red tie. Except now you don't even have to get the red tie, as it's already supplied to you. Absolutely marvellous. Right, let's do one more before I'm allowed to die. Time for another jump cut as we present Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Limited Edition. Boom! Oh. Hmm. Yes, here it is with that art style that's very um, sketchy and people like on posters a lot when it's to do with Metal Gear Solid. Yes, this is the Xbox 360 version of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, a game which I've yet to get around to playing, but it looks really good fun. I played the demo. It was a good laugh. I had much more fun than I had with other Metal Gear Solid games recently, although I haven't played five yet, which is meant to be like a laugh on a stick and absolutely fantastic. So what do you get in here then? Exclusive Play Arts, Kai 30cm Raiden White Armour figure, exclusive Raiden White Armour DLC. Just realised, isn't it weird how they pronounce that Raiden in Mortal Kombat? Yes, Raiden everywhere else. Weird. And Metal Gear Rising Revengeance video game. That's good. I'm glad that's in there. Although, if I remember, I actually took that out a while ago. So, let's undo boxes and probably wish I'd already done it, because it's going to take bloody ages. Now, the Play Arts figures are frickin' beautiful, as a general rule. They're really, really good figures. And I seem to recall that this one is no exception. Oh my god! Hang on. I've forgotten there were so many boxes. Why so many boxes? Here we go. And in the back, that's where the game was. But it's gone now, it's on another shelf. It was just a normal copy. Ooh, ooh, that's rather nice, isn't it? And the articulation on these things is also fantastic. Let's have a quick spin around the box. Do, 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 do. It's a box, it's got pictures on, it's a box. It's spun round again. Do -do -do that was the spinning box song. Uh, we're going to be releasing it on iTunes soon. Please, we'd love it to get to Christmas number one. Right, um, I'm actually going to have to jump cut again in order to avoid the incredibly dull unboxing and all the squeaking noises. But my goodness, here's the figure, and it's freaking beautiful. As with all these play arts, the attention to detail is amazing. Detailing and sculpt is superb. The paint is spot on. The articulation is really good and very unobtrusive. And basically, Basically, it's all tip-top. Look at his scary cyborg chin. Rrr, rrr. Clean your teeth, kids. Don't let what happened to me happen to you. So yeah, it's fucking great, basically. I mean, if you've got even vague interest in this character, I imagine you would probably want one of these figures. I forget how cheap this was. Well, it's something ridiculous, like um, 12 quid or something for the whole set, if I remember. See these limited editions? They just don't hold the value and then Zabby pump them out for 50p later, although you do have to deal with their appalling customer service. Ahem. <coughs> Never did receive my Bloodborne Collector's Edition, did I? Had to get it elsewhere, didn't I? Hmm, yes. Meant to show that in this video. OK, we'll save that for a later one, because this is getting too long. Oh, yeah, his uh, accessories are really good as well. You've got uh, feet to swap over in different poses. You've got hands so he can hold <gasps> the mighty katana of infinite sharpness. A few kunai Nine knives, a little thing to go in the back, a bigger knife, you've got to the scabbard of poshness, which is nice. You've even got in the back here various different uh, stands for holding in different poses, but I'm not going to mess with them because they're all sealed and I'm going to send this to a friend who is a massive Metal Gear Solid fan. Tell you something else I really liked. You can remove his quiff, the Pat Sharp manoeuvre, and put on Another one with the mask on. Uh, you see, so it looks like he's got a different head, but in fact it's just swapping a little bit round and it's kind of seamless. What a bloody great figure. You win a lot of points for using play arts, guys, because, you know, it's really goddamn nice. Oh yeah, because I'm worth it. Anyway, that's enough of that for the time being. I'll do some more soon because I need to clear some more space. <laughs> Ah, the joys of giant boxes. Anyway, these are the videos that keep on giving, because now you can have lots of entertainment by reading the comments below that have been left by people who kind of spent a lot of money on a limited edition, probably the Fallout one from this video, and feel a bit ripped off but won't admit it to themselves, and so they get really violently defensive about the item in the comments. Subscribe for more.